everyone. I'm live on my first ever live Instagram post. And, uh, sorry. Here I am. Ugh. Here. Great. People are watching. Oh my God. Hi, it's me. Let me just move this out of the way. I'm not very good on technology, so it's taking me a while to figure out how to do this. I haven't been on Facebook before, which is weird. Look, I've put makeup on myself that's not real, it's a filter. So here I am, just wanted to interact with you with my brand new album. This is Infinite Things. Um, I'm so glad that you guys have been listening to it and um, I'm going to open it up in front of you. Look, I'm so glad that you guys have been streaming it, buying it, um, listening to it and enjoying it and telling me all about the bits you like the best, which songs you like. So this is it, Infinite Things. Look inside. Get all the lyrics so that you can sing along with me by the time we go on tour, September 21. Um, and look, in there, there's a little picture of me. Grill. And there's the vinyl. Very excited. So, I... People are saying they can't wait to listen to it tomorrow. No time like the present. Why not today? So I'm going to talk you through a little bit about it. And then I was thinking that after that, you could ask me some questions and interview me on the comments. Um, so this is the album Infinite Things. The title track of the album is uh, obviously called Infinite Things. And I wrote it um, as a reaction to... Kind of like, it was, for me, it was like the life-changing moment of becoming a mother for the first time. But um, it's it could also just be like any big life experiences that you've had. And it was basically inspired by a story called The Aleph, which is by a writer called Borges, B-O-R-G-E-S, who wrote about this guy who was... Um, uh, 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 he was... Sorry, I'm thinking about too many things at once because I hate technology. Um, he was invited to his... I'm just putting my computer open so I can see the time. He's invited to his neighbour's house to go down the stairs and look at basically all knowledge. And what he realised from looking at it was that, that life and all experiences are equally weighted in the good stuff and the bad stuff. So when he thought that he was going to see Nirvana and he was going to just like know everything, he basically was met with the realisation that existence is about um, bad experiences and good experiences. And when you live your life, you have all of them. And I think that I was a little bit deluded when I became a parent, that I just thought everything would be wonderful and amazing and beautiful and poetic. And the reality was that it was really hard and that I felt devastated and I felt unworthy and I had postpartum depression. So I wrote this song, Infinite Things, for my child, which is kind of a love letter saying, all the joy and all the chaos that life brings. I see in your eyes those infinite things, which was like the kind of power of a baby has on you, um, of being able to like make you and break you, which is like a vulnerable feeling. So that's what infinite things is about. And it's about the weight of that. Um, and then people are asking a little bit about other songs. So gold, is the one that's out now um and it's all about celebrating life and kind of feeling like that 
we re we think that our happiness depends on lots of external things and that's quite relevant to now because lots of people some of you included um will be financially really unstable at the moment or feel like their happiness depends on their job and you know whatever money and stuff and basically it's about how the gold is in you so the finances are in you you inside is going to help you win in all of these awful situations um so gold's about that lots of people are loving monster monster ah. that's um a song that i wrote which was about my kind of relationship with um I'm just reading some of the comments. Sorry, it's easy to get distracted on these things and we have only 30 minutes. Um, it's about my relationship with the media and, um, but it can be about anything for you. It can be about like how sometimes people make you feel really, really special or, your, or my record company or whatever and they make you feel really, really special, build you up and then they're just like, oh, I don't like that anymore. And I feel like that happens in relationships and it happens in work and everything. So I wrote Monster, which is sort of a reaction to my relationship. Bad indigestion because I'm pregnant. Sorry about the burping. Um, it's sort of my relationship with both the media and my record company and everything. And public perception sometimes. Like, I know, I just give myself... Um, quite a hard time like I went on Jonathan Ross the other night to perform gold and I was just like I want to hide and never come out again because I was really really scared scared of what people might say about the fact that I'm just like Bleh. I've got these boobs that I've never had before and they're awful they give me backache um oh look someone's asking me a question what did you write me time about for me, it felt like a sort of expression of how lockdown is for some of us. Precisely, yes. I think we were like, lockdown, it was in the first lockdown with all these, with our family and stuff. And you know when you say, oh, like, I want to be with you forever to someone, you don't mean all day, every bloody day. Like, yeah, I love you, but I don't want to see you 24 seven, which is what happened in... Um, the lockdown so me time's a bit like saying yeah i really do love you but i'd like a bit of time to myself thanks let's have a look um at what people are asking thank you for saying you'll always love me you're so sweet i need that i'm deeply insecure right now i think we all need each other at the moment how's it going with your pregnancy sophie hughes says um well, it's my pregnancies are very normal, and that means they're filled with anxiety. I'm not really like a Hollywood pregnant person that just sort of glides through looking amazing. I have put a filter on this, and quite frankly, I need it right now. Um, I'm sort of feeling very encumbered, a bit on the back foot about. Um, moving around i've got various problems i don't know what my placenta's doing it's meant to go up i'll find out this week though um and i'm high risk category because my last baby was premature so i worry a lot plus we're in a pandemic and i'm trying to work so i'm constantly worried that i've got covid i mean i've got like a nursery sore throat today and um I had a COVID test last night because I was convinced that was it. I was a goner and um, turns out I'm negative. I just got a sore throat. <laughs> Who knew? Um, what else are people are saying? Don't feel insecure, Paloma. You're stunning, strong and amazing. Yeah, but only as much as the next person. But thanks. Um, 
down to earth. Take care of yourself. Oh, my grandson was an IVF angel. So precious. They are precious, those test tube babies. Um, people are just trying to find some questions. On a track such as Better Than This, how does... Oh, it keeps jumping up. I'm not very good at this. Writing process work when there are many writers. Okay, so what, when there's loads of writers, it means that it, you weren't all doing it at the same time. Because as you all know, I was in lockdown in my basement by myself. So what often happens is somebody starts with like an idea and it might have some really positive elements and then some not so positive elements and they might send it to someone else. And then that person goes, oh, I'd tweak this. And then it goes down sort of a line of people and then everyone has a little tweak and everyone contributes something. So everyone gets credited. And as you know, I'm from following all my social media, I'm really big on crediting people for what they've done so sometimes lists are really long from me where as most people would just put like two or three people but I try and make sure everyone gets their credit I'm just going to scroll up and have a look at some more questions Sarah Rees coming to see you on court in Cardiff cannot wait I can't wait either I'm dying to get on stage start of Supernatural sounds a bit 80s do you like the 80s music Darren Yes, I do like 80s music and I feel like with um, that it was like a little bit of a reference to Prince but also early Madonna, the way that I'm singing that and Madonna was like my big girl crush when I was a kid, I just thought she was just amazing. Um... Let's see. All my tour dates should be on my website. And I also have an app, Paloma Faith app, where I'm going to start doing sort of lots of um, unique, bespoke talking to my fans on it. But I've just launched the app this week. It's just called Paloma Faith. Um, and when you sign up, I'm going to be doing lots of exclusive things like special merch and blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Paloma, I'm in hospital fighting COVID-19 in Poland. You're the only light in the tunnel from P.O. P.O., I wish you heartfelt and sincerely that you get better. That sounds awful. I'm so sorry. Um, great album. Your albums are fantastic. Congratulations, Christy Andrews. They, she just told me, had their first date at one of my concerts and I stopped the crowd while singing for a selfie with them and now they're married. That's so cute. Here you go, Nicola Barrett. What inspires you to make your music and what advice would you give to someone who wants to do singing but is afraid to? Uh, let's see more. Afraid, oh yeah, just a kiss. How nice. Um, what inspires me to make my music? This particular album, Infinite Things, was totally inspired by the lockdown and all my thoughts. And I feel like, in a way, I had the space that I haven't had in a long time to really genuinely think about my life and my relationships. There's a song on there about my sister called I Die For You. Because my sister's quite an insecure person and she needs to be told sometimes or quite regularly that I love her and there's songs about obviously my daughter and my partner I've written a lot about um the type of love that isn't the first encounter or the end result which is what we always hear love songs about but about the bit in the middle which is the hardest bit which is keeping a relationship alive and I think that in hindsight, because I always had two-year relationships before this one that I'm in, um, in hindsight, I think that I invest a lot of time and love into my friendships and 
maybe not necessarily as much into my relationship. You sort of take your relationship for granted a bit. So I'm sort of learning to invest in um, my relationship. And that's what a lot of the love songs are about. So that's what inspired me. And then advice for someone who wants to do singing but is afraid to. That's a really hard one because I tend to just force myself to do stuff that I think might be happy, make me happy. But the thing that I have, which I think a lot of people don't have, is that I sort of have this philosophy that, like, even the worst, most embarrassing situations are temporary. So it's a little bit Buddhist. But I do go on stage quite often and take risks and I make mistakes and I forgive myself for my mistakes. And I also think that's what makes me human. And that's actually ended up being the reason why a lot of people like me because I'll go, oh shit, I messed that up. And then everyone laughs because they mess stuff up all the time. And we all do. And it sort of unites us. So I think to my advice would be to sort of get over the feeling that anything is going to impact your life. Any moment cannot impact your life forever. I don't believe that. I think it's how you handle those moments that decide whether they will or not. And if you don't give things power in life, they don't have power that makes sense it's hard to get to but I'm just looking at some more questions your styling is unique Paloma do you have a stylist or have the ideas yourself it's kind of a mix um I do have a stylist quite often and I always credit them on my Instagram but I also have quite a particular way of dressing that's um that's in inspired like that comes from me i.e I probably wouldn't wear something that I would, was told to wear. Sorry, very tired. Mm, Jade Finley, it took me three failed attempts to get my sister-in-law to finally see one of your concerts. It was worth it, though. Thanks. Let's see. Do you bring your babies on tour? I do bring my babies on tour, but as you all know, I try and keep my babies out of the public eye because I don't think it's... It's quite weird for a child to see their mum in that situation I don't really want my kids to see that until they're mentally old enough to understand that it's not it doesn't mean that I'm extra special or that I'm to be resented like I'm really into psychology and I take it all quite seriously my responsibility as a parent and I sort of don't think um it's healthy for my kids so I bring them to hang out with me but I wouldn't show them public reaction, if that makes sense. Um, what inspires you to support charities? Well, I've got a platform and it seems like a wasted space, really, if I don't do my bit or raise awareness. For example, I was really upset today about the all the news about the Sainsbury's advert. I mean, one of my absolute pet hates is racism. I didn't grow up with any of it. I'm from a very diverse background. I was brought up in Hackney. My dad's Spanish. My stepdad's Chinese that has been with us since I was three. Um, and Hackney's a melting pot. So I've never really um, been somebody that believes in division because of race. In fact, I think it makes better babies because you get stronger immune systems. <laughs> anyway, that's another chat about science. Um, look what else are people asking? This is fun. People ask more questions on Facebook. Apps. Oh, people are... I let people comment on what I'm saying. Um, so cute, Claire Crocker. My two-year-old has just learned to say your name. Keeps pointing to you saying your name. That's so sweet. Um, 
Oh, hello, Jamie Cracknell, cracking on to me. A bit flirty, love it. When you've become a mum, you can take all the flirting you can get. <laughs> love it. Um... Finding some more questions. By the way, just to let you into something, if you're thinking about buying my album but haven't done it, it'd be really great for me if you would do it this week because basically your first week chart position's the one and How competitive and awful, but that's top secret to the 1.6 thousand people watching. Where can I get the album? Online store. Look, listen, you can get the album in every single possible place you can think of. If you're old school, HMV. If you're new school, you can stream it on Spotify, but actually I prefer you bought it. iTunes, Amazon, hard copies they do. Quite a nice little Christmas present. Get them early, get them in, then you can relax. Um, everywhere you can think of, basically, you can buy this album. It's out everywhere. Uh, more questions. If you had three wishes for 2021, what would they be? Well, number one would be the same as everyone's, which would be... Let's just end the pandemic and get on with our lives. Number two would be that people would be taking the climate emergency more seriously and in the higher echelons of society, i.e. business owners and industrial people would start taking more responsibility and stop telling small households, oh, it's your fault, you've got to recycle and switch off the light switch, because quite frankly, that's not going to have as much impact as these big corporations sorting their shit out. That would be my second one. And the third one was would be that I have a healthy baby. I know it's selfish, but um, I've got a very good, lot of anxiety. But those are three things. So one for me, two for everyone. Um... You've worked with Pharrell, Betty Wright, Ghostface Killer. Who else would you love to work with? I would love to work with Paolo Nettini, Andre 3000, um, Janelle Monet, Lizzo, Harry Styles. Oh, I mean keep having dreams about him pregnancy dreams don't tell the boyfriend um did you enjoy producing your new album yourself was it liberating yes i feel like all the moments in our lives that's simon wilson all the moments in our lives where we do something ourselves that we didn't think we could do by ourselves are amazing that was one of them i don't know why i didn't try it before. I think, as I don't know, I think sometimes you talk yourself into thinking that's not your world, or because I'm technophobic that I can barely operate Facebook Live. I just thought it would be really complicated. Turns out it's very easy, and I never want to go to a studio again. I like doing it at home because it's more intimate. Um, people, how many babies have you got? Jacqueline McManus. I've got one, and I've got one in my stomach right now. Do you want to see it? That's it. Hello. Um, Travis Moore. How was filming Pennyworth season two? Can't wait to see what Beck gets up to this coming season. It was really great, and then the pandemic hit, and we had to stop, and it was a bit weird because we had to do lots of kind of anti-COVID stuff, like constantly be tested, constantly quarantined, um, all these protocol, and it was a little bit weird, but I do think that what we've got is pretty amazing, and I'm excited for you to see it. I watched some back the other day, and it's exciting. It's very slick, very stylish. 
So it's 1957. I am going to do a couple more questions. And then I'm going to go. Are you still in touch with any of the competitors from The Voice? The Voice Kids, I am. The one that I recently did. I still listen to their music and stuff. Um, here we go. Nathan, I, if this is goodbye, it's heartbreaking. I felt like your voice went to a new area within the song. I adore it. Felt so honest. Did you think you'd have a hard time singing it live due to the emotion? Yeah, it is hard because it's a really sad song and I think it's probably the best song I've ever written because it's about a really close friend of mine that I love so dearly who has been diagnosed with a terminal illness that's not curable. And every time I spend with him feels like special and important and so that's why the sentiment if this is goodbye because you never know when the last time will be um so that's really sad um and i i can't really listen to it without welling up it might be the pregnancy hormones but it's also because i genuinely feel that way and finally philippa johnson can we expect any more music videos soon love the new album thank you philippa so i haven't got any more music videos in the next few weeks but i tomorrow on my instagram i know tonight actually i'm going to start releasing some of the live versions of the album songs that i've um, been recording so it, after this i think you should see one and then every day this week to kind of honour and commemorate this release. Um, I've performed a few with my band, but sort of socially distanced, so you can't see them all in the video, but it was a live recordings. So I'm really excited about those. And then watch this space for more coming up to Christmas. This has been really enjoyable. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I can save it to this page because I have no idea what I'm doing with Facebook. Um, for those of you who missed it to watch. But thanks everyone and um, stay safe. And anybody who's got COVID watching, I hope you make a good recovery. And anybody who hasn't, wear your masks because they do work and wash your hands like a maniac. Mine have aged 100 years because I'm so obsessed by washing my hands. Um, all right, lots of love.